Okay, uh, we talked about the uh, basic uh, overview of photosynthesis and what uh, it accomplishes. We'll come back to that at the end of this. Let's talk a little bit more now about the steps, talk about the light reactions and the dark reactions. We were just talking about this photosystem. So uh, this picture here of this photosystem uh, is represented also in this picture here. So this, this is basically the same idea. The first picture is a little more general uh, and this is more specific about what's going on. So first we'll talk about the light reactions. And the light reactions have really uh, two steps in the light reactions. Uh, they're called photosystem two and photosystem one. And you'll notice that uh, the way this is always described, I'll start over here, photosystem two on the left, Photosystem 1 on the right seems kind of backwards in that Photosystem 1 seems like it should be over here and vice versa. And that is because this is the order in which they were discovered. So Photosystem 1 was discovered first uh, and this was just all a mystery. <clears throat> Nobody really knew kind of what happened here, uh, but so Photosystem 1 was discovered first. Later on, they discovered Photosystem 2, and this is how the picture comes out to be. So what happens is this. We have our light energy. The light energy is passed into the chlorophyll molecule, and the energy transfers through the covalent bond until it gets to a primary electron acceptor, which is a protein that grabs a hold of that high energy electron. Then what happens is that primary electron acceptor, uh, that primary acceptor then passes that high energy electron down a series of proteins that are designed to go at a slightly lower energy state as you move down. Kind of like the same idea as the electron transport chain that we saw in cellular respiration, but in this case it's in photosynthesis. So this idea of electron transport change you see is something that you can utilize uh, over. They're different, they have different proteins and so forth, but, but same basic concept. And what happens is that electron transport chain is uh, able to generate some ATP, but that's really not uh, what you're after. That's not the main goal of what you're attempting to do here. I'll explain that in a second. So that electron, if you remember in cellular respiration, the thing that grabbed a hold of the electron that was the final electron acceptor in cellular respiration was oxygen. But here, the final electron acceptor that's going to grab a hold of that actually ends up being photosystem one. So when photosystem one has light hit it and it loses its electron, in order to redo the reaction again, needs to replace that electron. That electron gets replaced from the reaction of photosystem two. So the photosystem one, when it loses its electron, it gets replaced by that from photosystem two. All right, and then we'll explain once again, there's, a, there's also a, an electron transport chain here. We'll get to that there in a second. Now, photosystem two, once the light hits it and it loses its electron to the primary acceptor, that electron's gone as it passes it this way. It can only do the reaction once unless it replaces that electron. So what happens with photosystem two is a very special kind of reaction called water splitting. So the way photosystem two gets its electron replaced is there's a special enzyme that splits a water molecule, takes the electrons to replace that that were lost in the photosystem two reactions, and that gives you oxygen and hydrogen. So once again, plants, when they do photosynthesis, uh, you should know one of the things they give off is oxygen, and that's where they give the oxygen off. It's in the splitting of water that happens in the photosystem two uh, set of reactions. Uh, and so plants also, once again, need water. If a plant doesn't have water, it can't do the photosystem two reactions, and it doesn't produce uh, this oxygen here. So oxygen to the plant really here is just a waste product. It's just something that happens uh, in photosystem two, the water splitting, because it needs the electrons. Now over here what's going to happen with this transport chain is we're going to make a, a molecule that's going to look similar to something we've seen in photosynthesis or cellular respiration, and that is this one here called NADPH. So once again, this 
right here is basically the same picture just drawn slightly differently you can see the light here's the reaction center here's the photosystem 2 reactions here's the primary electron acceptor the electron transport chain going down like that which then goes to photosystem 1 those electrons then are used in another electron transport chain and that's used to take NAD plus to make NADPH remember that NADP plus this is kind of like NAD and if you remember in cellular respiration we had NAD which was basically NAD became NADH when it was holding on to high energy electrons that's what's happening here NADPH is holding on to high energy electrons we're going to need those later on in the dark reactions <clears throat> Okay, here's another way to show you sort of the, uh, they have these different kind of pictures showing you. In this case, uh, here's a guy hitting this, uh, this uh, lever here and that pushes, so that's the photon, that's the energy going in to pushing that electron at a high energy state. And then there's a little mill here and as you drop these electrons and as they go down the stairs, uh, basically or down this gradient here, that energy is used to produce NADPH. So different ways to sort of show you uh, this same concept. This also, once again, this is the same thing. So this is what it really kind of looks like because here's the thylakoid uh, membrane, right? There's my phospholipid bilayer, kind of like what was in the mitochondria, but in this case it's in uh, photosynthesis. And here's my proteins, so here's my photosystem 2 and my photosystem 1. Here's my electron transport chain in both of those, and here I am making my NADPH. Okay? Now, uh, another picture kind of uh, showing you the same sort of idea, but here they don't have the uh, parts labeled on it. But the concept is the same. As long as you know that summary chart of what goes in and what goes out, you're in good shape. Now, we did all that. Now, we made our ATP and we made our NADPH because what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use this enzyme here called Rubisco. And we're gonna shorten it and call it Rubisco because it has a very long name, uh, which you saw and we'll talk about in a little bit uh, at the end summary chart here. But here's my enzyme of Rubisco and I'm gonna take CO2 molecules, carbon dioxide, and basically the Rubisco is going to take the CO2 plus the little bit of ATP that we produced in uh, the light reactions as well as the NADPH and what you're going to make out of that Rubisco is going to hook those together and eventually give you this thing called G3P. G3P is essentially the same thing as glucose. When glucose gets split uh, early on in uh, cellular respiration and glycolysis, it becomes G3P. So if you can make G3P, you've essentially made glucose. So the Calvin cycle or the dark reactions because they don't require light, the whole idea here that's important is we're taking carbon dioxide, this enzyme Rubisco, my ATP and my NADPH, and I'm hooking them together to give me this G3P at the end, which again, is glucose okay uh, another summary chart to show you sort of the two things together the light reactions and the calvin cycle of the dark reactions and what we're doing in the light reactions is we're taking in light and water we're getting oxygen out of that again as a waste product and then uh, i'm making a little bit of atp and nadph and i'm using those in the calvin cycle along with rubisco to make sugars to make my glucose and again, here's uh, what you want to focus on at the end. Uh, you want to make sure you know what the main, uh, what the stages are, light reactions and dark reactions, what goes in and what comes out, and what's the main goal? What do you hope to accomplish uh, through each of these? And the main goal of photosynthesis at the end is to make glucose. So plants make glucose, and then plants also go through cellular respiration to use that glucose to make ATP uh, when they do glycolysis and the electron transport chain and so forth. So that concludes then uh, this lecture on photosynthesis.